Come with me. Come Sam, you spilled the gentleman's drink. Yes, sir. Sorry, sir. It's a very good year. Yeah, it is. Enjoy. Listen, next time this client calls, would you mind arranging an office appointment? I tried my best, but he sounded so desperate. Well, I still think it's a put-on, somebody's idea of a gag. No, he had an honest voice. And you know an honest voice. We just follow his instructions? <laughs> PTR 858. Dark car around corner. Dark car around corner. Come on. I don't see anybody. Maybe he's hiding on a back seat. Or in a trunk in a burlap bag. Sam, this is it. He's got to be around here somewhere. Unless he's a very small man. One twenty-four and a half Skyler. Fire escape. things are heavy. Because it's here, Tensing. We shouldn't have left the oxygen down at the base camp. Oh. Uh, Mr. Bolt, I presume, and Miss West, I'm Arthur Bird. I phoned to ask you to meet me here. Well, it's a nice, homey little place you have here, Mr. Berber. Don't you think my office had been better? Oh, I don't live here. This is my hideout. I'm sorry to put you through all this, but I'm uh, being followed. Someone already knows the worst. I'm so afraid. Now, easy, easy. Take it from the beginning. This store where I work, you know, it's a very, very big place, lots and lots of money, and I got to thinking about that. I'm chief clerk in accounting, you know, and all that lovely currency from every department, all those payments from the credit office, all that money in my hands, and I figured out a way, a foolproof way. Hold it. Are you asking us to help you rob that store? Oh, no, no, no. I already did that. I want to hire you to put it by. taking on some crazy jobs, but this is the weirdest note. Of course we'll help you, Mr. Bird. We'll help him to the nearest lawyer, that's all. You can plead insanity. <laughs> Sam's joking. We'll put your money back for you. Honey, we have to perform a burglary in reverse. Well, that's the best way, isn't it? For honest people like us. Burglar alarms, night watchmen, policemen. I can see us now telling the judge, Judge, we're putting the money back in the safe. <laughs> He'd break up. That's the part that appeals to me. We were the first to ever unrob a safe. Now, tell me all about it. Well, it all started as a sort of little game, like doing a puzzle, really. 
You see, at the end of each day, I count the money and bag it and deliver it to the big safe in the store manager's office. And I began to play this harmless little game. Of course you did. What game? Well, in the game, I switched dummy bundles of currency for the real thing on Monday and Tuesday. And then I took all that lovely money and I went to live with a beautiful native girl on Bora Bora. Miss the plane? I heard that the native girls there speak French and I don't. Besides, it gets awfully hot there. I found out that I'm honest. There, there. Could happen to anybody. Why don't you put the money back yourself? I can't. The office is always full of people, and the safe's never open unless the manager's there. And I wouldn't know how to break in at night. Why, I'd be scared to death. That's a criminal offense. I know, I know. When will they discover the money's missing? On Friday, the armored truck picks up the money and delivers it to the bank, and they make their count to tally with the deposit slips I've filled out each day. Well, then we have until Friday morning to uncommit the perfect crime. Let's see, today's Wednesday. Thursday looks like a bad day. Foster, that dress ad ran at 9.95, not 19.95. Don't you read your ad copy? You get that merchandise off the floor at once. I don't care what you tell them. Tell them you're sold out. Yes, ma'am. You are the manager of this store? I am. May I help you? Let us hope so. I wish to exchange this utterly foul piece of merchandise. Well, we have an exchange department that takes care of that sort of thing. I do not deal with underlings. Why don't you have a fire escape out here? Because I do not allow fires in this office. Tell me, what is wrong with this merchandise? Mm -hmm. Oh, it's just tacky, that's all. Why are the locks in all the windows? To keep me from jumping out on days like this. Men's pajamas. Ghastly, aren't they? Well, that's a matter of taste. I presume you bought these for your husband. I presume a great deal. Where does this lead to? That is my washroom. Whoops! What is it you want, madam? I am not a madam. Oh, my apologies. Now tell me, what is wrong with those pajamas? My butler refuses to wear them. He says they're beneath his dignity. Well, we'll gladly refund your money. Do you have the sales receipt? Of course not. The maid made the purchase. Oh, the maid. Well, you take this note and the merchandise down to the adjustment department. And they will be glad to refund your money. Oh, thank you. <laughs> now, I think you better go lie down with a cold towel. You don't look too well. No, no, not that door. That's my closet. Your closet? You have a very expensive overcoat. Take this lady down to adjustments. Please. Please. Mr. Rockwell was really terribly sweet about the whole thing. That is, it didn't actually hit me. <laughs> you say this door leads to his washroom? Right, and the one across the way hides the safe. But this one leads directly into the hall, and there's an electric eye beam set in the door facing. That's part of the general alarm system. We can avoid setting that off. I wish I were so sure. Meg, there's no chance of getting in through the windows. You'd have to be a pigeon, Sam. Maybe the roof down a rope. A skinny pigeon. You see, the windows only open about two inches for air, and then the locks hold them. The whole layout is just about the way Mr. Bird described it. I stopped and spoke to him in the accounting department. He's such a sweet little man. He'd make a terrible convict. So would I. All we have to do is find a way to get into that store tonight and beat the alarm system. <coughs> Bruce, stop that! Oh, Bruce. Oh, look at that. It's ruined. Thanks, Bruce. Thanks? Bruce just gave me an idea. Excuse me. Would you excuse me, please? Would you let me get, would you, would you let me get through here, please? Are you the store engineer? That's right, lady. Well, how did it happen? It's kind of hard to explain. Yeah, it always is. Do you think you can get it out? Well... 
Uh, look, lady, if I bring the elevator up to this floor in order to get the door open, it's going to bust off the part inside. Would you settle for a new one? Well, this one has sentimental value. Uh, well, it, it's going to take some time. That's all right. I have plenty of time. I can show you where it is. The store engineer isn't here right now. That's okay. I don't need him. He's upstairs in women's dresses. Some nutty dame got something caught in the elevator doors. Do tell. The main electric panel's right down that aisle there and to the left. Thanks. Right. He will unlock the freight elevator. I know it fits. I tried it. Now, if only Mr. Bird would get here. I wonder what's keeping him. Cold feet, maybe. You know, without him, we can't get into that safe. Oh, come on, Arthur. We can't leave the truck parked here all night. Uh-oh. Headlights. It's all right. They've gone. You know, I hear that Bora Bora is a groovy place. I wonder if I could learn to speak French. We, oui, mademoiselle. Money, money, money. Someone's coming. I think it's Mr. Bird. Uh, uh, listen, listen. They, they tried to get the money. Searched my rooms. They need to be told where. Who did? I don't know. A dangerous madman. Watch out. Arthur. His arms twisted under him. Oh, poor dear. Boy, somebody gave him a working order. But who else could know we had the money? Something only he could tell us. If he could tell us anything. Unless we get the combination of that safe, we're stuck with the money. We may all have to learn French. Don't be ridiculous. What a girl do in Bora Bora. In about eight hours, that bank truck is going to be collecting from the store. Let's take Arthur to my place. Take care of him. I'll drive. Oh. Must get to the store. Put the money back. Easy, Arthur. You're going to be all right. I must put the money back or go to jail. I think... You're in no shape for this outing. Why don't you tell us how to get in that safe? I promise, Mr. Rockwell. I can't tell him my solemn trust. It's the most honest little crook I ever met. Arthur, we understand how you feel. That combination is your responsibility. But you can trust us. We want to help you. It's right to 54? 54. Fifty-four. Left to 21, right to 18, left to 46. 46. Got it. Thank you, Arthur. We'll take care of everything for you. If anything goes wrong, I'll come to see you on visiting days. Or we'd be hearing bells by now. Yeah, now if we can just get around the watchman, that way.
Can't we afford a better brand of cloth warm? It's advertised in all the best magazines. Well, here we glad to know that. You'll only be out for about a half hour. We should be gone by then. Yeah, we should. I just hope I gave them the right combination to the safe. I was so groggy, I'm afraid I got it all wrong. Oh, but you're not sure. Hello? What? I'm sorry, your voice is so muffled, I, I can't understand you. Oh, no, uh, Miss West is not available just now. Any message? Oh, just a moment. Somebody wants to speak to you. Hello? I can't hear you. What? Who is this? No, no, I tell you, I don't have the money. No, you're wrong. I don't have it. They hung up. Oh, what a hang. No, if it just doesn't work, maybe he lied to us. Try it again. We're running out of time. We can't stop now. Try reversing the first two numbers. I know you could do it, Sam. Now, let's see, Arthur said they switched the bundles for Monday and Tuesday. Yeah. That's it. God. Right. Here, what a job. Rounding third and heading for home. Thrown out at the plate. Uh, you'd never believe this, but... We're putting the money back in the safe. Of course you are. That thought finally struck me. Put the bag on the desk, please. Mr. Rockwell said, put the bag on the desk. I heard it. Before you call the police. Oh, there's no need of the police. Not just yet, at any rate. Now, if you'll fold up those bags and close the safe. Don't you see, Sam? He's going to keep the money and let Arthur go to jail. And all the evidence points to Arthur Bird. After all, the chief accountant does certify the daily tally. He signs the deposit slips. And um, how did you find out about the money switch? Arthur's a good bookkeeper. A very poor liar. You're so right. You know, I was just saying to Sam... Now, don't do anything foolish or I'll have to shoot you. And I'd be in the clear. After all, this is my office. And obviously, you two are burglars. And I have a witness. I still can't figure out how you got onto this, Rockwell. You must be a real Sharpie. I know my employees. When I discovered the shortage, I didn't think Arthur could go through with it. So I had him closely followed. Hey! Get it!
Sleeping Beauty woke up. Well, let me get this money back in the safe. I've got a better idea. Let's leave them holding the bag. We're out. You feeling better now, Arthur? Oh, yes, thank you. Oh, you've been so nice to help me. You know, I still can hardly believe that Mr. Rock. Don't take their word for it. The story's right here. Read it. Okay. Store manager trapped in burglary. Listen. C.G. Rockwell, manager of a large downtown department store, is under police guard in a hospital today. Charged with faking a burglary from his own office safe. How unscrupulous. Rockwell was injured while attempting to escape. All the money was recovered from a Gladstone bag in his possession. What a shame. It wasn't worse. Credit for forging the robbery goes to the alert night watchman, Ben Curtis. Under prodding by reporters, Curtis admitted engaging in a terrific battle with the masked burglar. Got any more of that chloroform? I'd like a whiff of the stuff. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's time for me to get to work. I do want to be there when that bank truck arrives. Are you sure you're up to it, Arthur? Oh, yes. I'm so happy to go to work. I just think if things had gone wrong, I'd be in Bora Bora this morning with some native girl. <laughs> oh, about your fee, Miss West. Don't worry about that, Arthur. We trust you. I suspect you're an honest man. <laughs> Where are you going? Shopping. I saw the cutest dress when we were strolling through the department store last night. It's a white sheet, three-quarter length sleeve, high neck, and a beautiful dress. <laughs>